That's interesting. Like you become so accustomed to consuming porn and like pleasure through a screen that that's, you actually enjoy that more than a partner physically in front of you. Right. Wow. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanigato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, today we're speaking to a woman who reached out, and she's a 27-year-old female who has been addicted to porn since she was 13. And she said in her email that she wants to share her story because anytime porn addiction is talked about, it's typically in reference to men. So she wants to talk about the reality of what porn addiction does to the mind of a female, especially when it starts at a young age. So we've got the guests on the line. Thank you so much for being on today. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, so I guess let's start at age 13. Can you walk us through, I guess, your introduction to porn and the sort of immediate effect that it had on you at that age? Yeah, so um, when I was 13, I, as a birthday gift, received my first um, smart device. And um, I was downstairs one evening and I just, I got on the family computer um, to just, you know, browse the internet. And when I opened up the, um, web browser, um, there was a, a porn site up. Um, I had never seen anything like that before. Um, and it quite honestly scared me right at first. Um, so I, I freaked out and I called my brother in there and I showed him and I asked what it was and um, he just ripped the laptop out of my hands and went in and um, yelled at my parent. Um, and then that night, I when I went to bed, I realized that I essentially had a computer on my nightstand. Um, and so I remembered the name of the website and decided to search it. And the rest is kind of history. So... So you like stumbled upon porn? Yeah. Okay, so your original reaction was to shut the laptop and it kind of freaked you out. What about it kind of like brought you back to it that night? Yeah, so I guess um I guess just curiosity. I mean, you're 13, that's kind of the age that you kind of start thinking about those types of things. Um and I remember that it looked intriguing. Um, I didn't really spend too long looking at the web page on the computer, but um, I do remember, like, even though it freaked me out, it, it wasn't like a scary, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get in trouble. It was more of a, oh, this is scary and new, but also intriguing. <laughs> Were you like familiar with the concept of sex and did you have a basic understanding at that time? So you, so you sort of immediately knew what porn was or was this almost like an introduction to sex? No, no, this was all brand new. I had never been given the quote unquote talk. Um, I pretty much anything that I knew about sex was like talked about on, on the back of the bus or on MTV. Mm -hmm. So, um, this, this is where I learned everything was when I stumbled upon this website. Yeah. And obviously very impressionable age. Um, I would assume people have similar stories, you know, being close in age and having access to, you know, whether it's a family computer or when phones get introduced with the internet, you know, around that age, a lot of people start discovering what porn is. So for you, what was your relationship with it after that first night? We obviously know what it's led to up to this point. So can you just talk a little bit about where that addiction maybe started or when you realized that, you know, you were very, very interested in it? Yeah. So, um, the first night it was just kind of like, like I said, I knew, I knew pretty much nothing about anything. And then I go to this website and it's just opened up this entire world of, you know, I'm, I'm sure pretty much everyone listening has looked at a porn site at some point. Um, so, you know, that you, there's anything and everything that you could possibly search. So, um, I guess we're, the addiction kind of started to develop was just like 
after I looked at it the first time, my mind just started, you know, crafting up all of these different scenarios. And I would just wonder, oh, I wonder if there's a video of this. I wonder if there's a video of that. Um, and I didn't realize for a long time that it was a problem until um, I finally got old enough to start dating and I realized how much it had actually started to affect me mentally. Can you go into that a little more? Like, what do you, what do you mean by that? It was affecting you mentally. So um, whenever I finally got old enough to start dating, you know, like, um, especially where I grew up, it's like, if if you're a female, you're expected to be, you know, kind of prim and proper and and whatnot. Um, but for me, like when I looked at boys, I wanted them to desire me sexually. I did not care if they um, liked my personality, if they, um, you know, thought I was funny, if they thought I was pretty. I just wanted them to look at my body and desire me in that way. Um, so it it really just um, started to affect the relationships that I was choosing and, um, you know, the things that I was wanting out of those relationships that really shouldn't have been normal at that age. Okay. Was there a pressure sexually because of the porn that you were consuming of, you know, I, a lot of things people run into at a certain age is like, if that's your first introduction to sex, you think that's what sex is or these professional porn stars set the standard of sex and pleasure and how people should be acting, you know, during intercourse. Is that something that affected you where you thought your sex life had to mirror what you were seeing online? Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, it affected every single aspect of it. Um, the way I behaved, the things that I, I thought that I was into that whenever it came down to it, I was like, Oh my God, no, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. But then at that point I had already put myself in that situation. Um, and so, and I, I call it the sick part of my brain or the addict part of my brain, but that part of my brain wouldn't allow me to stop. Okay. And, you know, at this time, like how often were you consuming porn? Um, at that point, I would say at minimum multiple times a week, if not daily. And this... I'm going to assume like masturbating as well. This isn't just like consuming and exploring it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you're 13 at the time still? Um, yeah. I mean, moving on through the ages, but yes, that's when it started getting that bad. So at what age did, were you able to put that type of language to this like addiction or like I'm consuming this really frequently or now this is a part of my everyday life? Um, I didn't actually connotate the word addiction with it until I was probably in my mid twenties. Okay. Um, up until that point, I really just thought that I liked it a lot. Um, but whenever I started dating my spouse, um, I was, that's when I decided to try and stop. And that's when I realized that it was a problem. Did you ever have conversations with like friends and whatnot about porn and, you know, you kind of like had a realization of like, oh, they kind of either don't watch it or they consume it way less than I do? No, I never talked to anyone about it um, or the fact that I watched it. I would just kind of in passing, you know, make crude jokes um, and just kind of like read their body language, I guess. Um, but I never outwardly told anyone that I watched it. No. Yeah. It's interesting too, because, you know, when it comes to porn addiction and this is the question we have for you, I think on the surface, you kind of think, okay, this is just a habit that is maybe like a compulsion or taking up a lot of this person's time. Like they have to get home, they have to watch porn, they have to masturbate, or they do it multiple times a day. But it's interesting to hear that even from a young age for you, that addiction is, yes, it's that time consuming aspect of consuming it, but it's how much it just immediately seeps into your love life, your sex life, or like you said, even just how you're presenting yourself. So it seems like even at a young age, porn and sex, like it just, it almost became an addiction in the sense that it 
I guess, spilled into all aspects of your life of just like your identity and who you are. I, I don't, I don't know if I'm exaggerating that, but that's kind of what I'm gathering from what you've said so far. No, you're a hundred percent correct. I mean, it affected my sense of humor. It affected the type I'm, I'm an avid reader. It started to affect um, the types of books I was reading, the movies I would watch, um, you know, any, anything really. And I mean, we live in such a sex dominated world, so it's easy for it to um, run that deep and it's easy to seek out types of media um, that have all of that type of stuff in it. Um, but yeah, it definitely hypersexualizes you at a young age. Interesting. And you're just like conjuring it up in like all forms of content. It's not just like logging onto a porn website. It's like any type of entertainment I want to consume, I want it to have this sort of underlying sexual element to it. Yes. Wow. And uh, was there ever a time where you started to realize like, okay, I'm watching porn a lot or I'm consuming, you know, just sexual things a lot across the board? Um, did you ever try to sort of address that or talk to anyone about it? Um, I never told a soul that I struggled with this until last year. Oh. Um, I finally, last year, I, I got fed up with it and I'm really, really trying to stop. Um, so I told my spouse, I told um, one of my closest friends and I told my therapist. Um, and then I actually last night met with another individual that I trust and opened up to them about it. Um, the thing that I've learned about porn addiction is, I mean, it's like any addiction, it thrives in secrecy. But the difference between a porn addiction and say an addiction to drugs or alcohol um, is that you can see anyone walking down the street and you would never know that they have a porn addiction. I mean, if you saw me walking down the street, you would never in a million years think that this is something I struggle with. Um, so the longer I, I kept it in the dark, um, the worse it got. And, um, I have noticed a huge difference since actually opening up and talking about it, that I'm not giving it power anymore over me. Um, I'm kind of trying to take that control back. Wow. Well, that, that's great to hear. And thank you for including us in that journey. And, you know, hopefully even just having this conversation with us strangers helps. Uh, but you mentioned, kind of hitting that point where you were fed up with it. So what were you fed up with exactly when it comes to the addiction? I'm fed up with it, consuming my mind, consuming my life. Um, it's severely affected my intimacy with my spouse. Um, so, I mean, when watching porn, it's it. there's no intimacy about it. It's just... I don't know if I can curse on here, but it's just straight up fucking basically. Yeah, you can, you can. And um, so it's it's so incredibly difficult to me um, because I've never been able to connotate sex with love. Um, and I, I see that affect my spouse. Um, and that's really what I think what pushed me to that breaking point. Which, which kind of, pro like what kind of problems were, you know, sort of arising uh, in your marriage or your relationship with your, uh, your spouse, um, prior to you opening up about this, were there like underlying issues that maybe they brought up, um, you know, before you opened up that you were like, Oh, I can attribute that to the porn addiction. Um, nothing was ever brought up to me, but from my end, I just, um, I noticed that I would find myself, I would rather watch porn than be intimate with my spouse because um, it was more fun for me. Or, you know, because on, on a porn website, you're open to any world of possibility of watching any scenario play out. But when you're with an individual, um, you're really kind of limited to what they like, you know. Um, and then it's it also affects like, arousal which sounds crazy but you get to a certain point where you cannot be aroused unless it is on a screen in front of your face um and i i always thought that i was weird for that but i recently found a reddit forum 
um, about this and I was reading a bunch of the different posts and so many people have said the same thing. That's interesting. Like you become so accustomed to consuming porn and like pleasure through a screen that that's, you actually enjoy that more than a partner physically in front of you. Right. Wow. What do you remember when you sort of first brought this up to your spouse, how that conversation went? Yeah. So it was really surprising actually. Um, so I, I came home and I just had told them, you know, I, I really want to talk to you about this, to open up about this. Um, please don't judge me. Um, and I just kind of spewed it all out and they just looked at me and said, I know. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean, you know? <laughs> and they said, I, I've just kind of picked up on it over the years. And I just figured that you would open up to me whenever you found it right. So. Hmm. What do you think yeah. the signs were? Um, I think just innuendos that I made, comments that I made, um, questions that I would ask. Just, I, to be honest, I don't know. I didn't ask because um, I was like ugly crying at that point. But Is there any other ways that you're sort of combating this other than, you know, kind of opening up and telling people about it? Yeah, so um, porn addiction really just causes a lot of shame internally. Um, so like I said in my email to you guys, it's always talked about as a man's issue. So from a female point of view, it's like any anytime I think about it, I think, oh my gosh, I'm so gross because this is something that I struggle with and and no other no other female on the planet struggles with this. Um, so that's a, a big part of it. But what I found crazy was when I opened up to my therapist about it, she had told me that seven out of 10 people who open up about porn addiction to her are female. Um, and it's so not talked about, which is why I'm trying to do this, but. Yeah. I mean, it, that, that really interests us, um, when, when you first reached out is that something that you think made you keep it a secret even longer, just being a woman and it's kind of the fear of being judged as a woman who has this addiction? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, you, anytime I would think about it, I would think everyone I tell is going to judge me. Everyone's going to think that I'm so gross for struggling with this. Um, but what I have found is that the four people who I've opened up to about it so far, every single one of them, their response has been, okay, how can I help you overcome this? I have never once been met with disgust. I have never been met with, you know, shunned or whatever, um, which is really, really helping me, um, be more vocal about what I struggle with. Yeah. So like present day, um, I know this is new where you're coming out, uh, and, and talking about this more. So how are you sort of actively trying to combat this on a day to day? Is it like a go cold Turkey a try to wean yourself off? What does that process look like? No. So, um, going cold Turkey actually makes it worse. Um, in my experience. So, um, something that I have had to do is just kind of, I don't want to say wean myself off, but like stop watching videos and then eventually stop reading books. Um, and then I've had to, from a day to day, I really have to be mindful about, um, the movies I watch, the TV shows I watch. Um, like I said, the books that I read, um, because pretty much any book you read anymore is going to have some type of sexual content in it. Um, I also have found that it really, I get triggered out of boredom. So if I'm home by myself, um, I cannot lay down. I cannot be idle. I have to get up and go on a walk or I usually I'll clean my entire house until my spouse gets home um, because I know that I'm going to be less likely to watch it or read it um, whenever my spouse is home. Hmm. And where are you like in this journey now? Like, do you have a good handle on it or this is still kind of new or? 
No, it's uh, it's still kind of new. I'm trying to get a handle on it, um, but it's really difficult. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Um, is is the ultimate goal for porn addiction, and I'm sure it's different for everyone, but it like will porn can that still be part of your life, like pleasuring yourself or watching porn, or is the eventual goal to not consume it at all because it would be too triggering? I think for me, it would be the latter. Um, I have learned throughout my life. Unfortunately, I learned this at 13, but I have a very addictive personality, um, which is why I had to eventually I had to stop drinking because I felt myself going down a slippery slope. Um, and you know, just things of that nature. So for me, it will be, um, I cannot ever watch it ever again. Um, or I'll just be triggered back into a spiral. And also you mentioned something about like forums, I think earlier. And like, is that something that, uh, has helped along in your journey? Like the Reddit? Yeah. Thread? Yeah. So, um, I have, that has helped a lot. Um, just reading that there aren't other people that there are other people struggling just like I am. Um, but then there are also, you know, different apps and different avenues that you can find. So there's an app called um, Covenant Eyes, which I've heard is kind of controversial, but, and then there's another app called Purity Browser. And basically what it is, is you download the app on your phone and you do have to pay, I think a monthly fee, but you assign a trusted individual and anytime um, something pops up on your phone that could be triggering, they get a notification about it and they can reach out to you. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, there's tons of things like that. I have not gotten to the point where I am ready <laughs> to fully commit to something like that but that's the goal by the end of the year okay wow um how is there well i don't know i don't know if you know the answer because it's so new but i would imagine it's tough you're ultimately trying to fight a porn addiction which understandably the you know sort of impossible standards that porn sets the screen time of it all but it's still sex and I imagine you still have an active sex life with your partner. So how do those two worlds meet? Like, does that make intimacy or sex difficult or is there fear of that becoming an addiction? I'm just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to these, but I'm curious how no. you navigate that. Yeah. So I've, I've never had a fear of like, actual sex becoming an addiction um it definitely does affect my sex life with my spouse um which is an ongoing struggle in and of itself and that's something that we're kind of working through on our own and especially now that they are aware of what's been going on in my life for half of my life at this point um it's made it easier to kind of work through those things but yeah it it definitely does affect intimacy but no i don't think that would ever become an addiction. Interesting. So like at this stage is, is like sex like a turn on for you or a turn off or somewhere in between? Um, kind of neither. <laughs> okay. I, it's just kind of static, I guess, if that makes any sense. Interesting. Yeah. And I'm only harping on that just because it, again, like that, for porn addiction, like how harmful that can be for, you know, your real life sex life with, you mm -hmm. know, a partner or with anyone. Um, it's, it's to see like the toll that that actually has in, in real right. life. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, moving forward, I mean, uh, you know, kind of what is your approach to this? I mean, you say that you're, uh, in therapy and, mm -hmm. You know, do you have like a plan that you kind of laid out with your therapist of, you know, what are kind of like the steps moving forward to eventually sort of eradicate this from your routine? Yeah, so the biggest thing right now is to just, you know, continue to open up about it, um, continue to talk to people that I trust. Um, and then eventually I will get to a point where um, I'll find someone that I'm comfortable um, 
having on an app, um, a phone monitoring app with me. Um, and then, you know, just limiting or putting stops in place to where I cannot access that type of media. So whether it's, you know, getting rid of my Kindle device or um, setting screen time limits on my internet browsers and, you know, things like that um, to where I physically cannot access these things. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the last question I have just in general with porn addiction throughout this time from, you know, 13 to now, is, is it something that has affected like your job or your day to day, like career path, school, something like that? Or had you been able to balance the two? Um, it's only affected my day to day career path a couple of times. Um, and I, I'll just get, I'll get random triggers throughout the day. Um, whether it's like a sound or, um, you know, a, a sentence that somebody says that maybe I heard in a video one time or, you know, just things like that. Um, and if that happens, it does trigger me. And then it makes me want to just like go to the bathroom and watch it. Um, and is that something which, you would do? Um, I have one time and then I felt so guilty about it that I never did it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we can't thank you enough for, I mean, just reaching out to us in the first place. I think, you know, to, it's always interesting to speak to someone who just has, you know, the awareness that you have, you know, for, in this case, this, this addiction, um, but you're, you know, starting your journey, essentially you're using us as a platform that, you know, I hope is cathartic for you and helps you be able to even open up to more people or, you know, that you find comfort that, you know, people will be hearing your story and that people who are in similar positions as you will be hearing the story. And, um, again, just to see the void in the narrative of, you know, female porn addiction and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to want to shed light on that and picking us as that platform. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for for having this podcast. I've been watching it for a while and um, just the amount of people that you've been able to give space to be honest and open is really, really powerful. So I really appreciate what you guys are doing and that you've given me the opportunity to share. Thank you so much. And, and yeah, the show is nothing without, you know, people like you coming on and uh, opening up and being so honest. So we appreciate you coming on and uh, good luck with everything. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You guys too. Yeah. Good luck. We're, we're behind you. We're rooting for you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye. It's, uh, it's interesting to think about how many people this might be happening to. Mm -hmm. Like, I think growing up, I've also heard a lot of my friends talk about, like, they would jerk off every day. <laughs> or like, you know, and like, that's probably with porn. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of people that I know that don't watch porn at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I so think, it is a I thing. think for so many people in general, whether it's a uh, porn addiction or not, if, you know, maybe it doesn't get to that point, but there's no way as a generation growing up with that access and the internet that it hasn't overall affected intimacy, sex life, hundred percent, beauty standards. I mean, you know, you go down the list, you name it. And it's, I think it's just been damaging to so many people. And it's interesting to hear, I guess, like anything, like any thing that's available to us, like recreational drugs, alcohol, porn, gambling, like for some people, you know, whether it's addictive personalities or whatever it is, it's like, to go full blown addiction, you know, yeah, it's, it's scary. Cause it's, it's just so accessible. I also think that it's a combination between two things. One being, I mean, the access to porn as well, like with the, with the introduction of like smartphones and computers and shit like that, but also the generation that like our parents, it's very taboo to talk about sex. My parents never talked to me about mm -hmm. sex ever. We still don't talk about sex in the house. Like I haven't had 
many sexual conversations with like my siblings, mm-hmm. uh, even about the idea of having sex or whatever. Like no one makes like jokes or anything like that. Like there's children running around yeah. and no one's just, yeah, yeah. And, and we're just assuming that, you know what I mean? Like there's no actual conversation. So because it's like taboo and no one's talking about it. And then there's this, all this access. It's like, th- that is a recipe for being able to, uh, for, for a child especially, or like a teenager, uh, to abuse that, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just kind of like have to explore it and like do it on its own and like figure it out and hope to God that you that you do it correctly, you know, because right. without any sort of guidance or, you know, whatever, I think that it's it's actually important to, I had a whole fucking argument with my father one time about like, you know, uh, younger kids in sexual conversations mm-hmm. and that whole thing. I, I think that it, it might, you know, and I don't know this for sure, but I think a part of me is like, it, it, it's, it's probably important to have those conversations before children start like having like their hormone and like go through puberty and whatever, just so they don't irresponsibly like mm-hmm. go about exploring that and experimenting that. Yeah. And I realize that that's very taboo. And like, I'm not saying show porn to a fucking 10 year old or like, I'm not saying that, but, I, but like having conversations and warning, you know, kids about, um, you know, what it is and intimacy and, and love and, and this and whatever, and like the good things that are connected to a sexual mm-hmm. encounter so that it isn't irresponsibly sort of used. Cause yeah. otherwise it's like, I had to just kind of figure that out. I mean, I also had like older siblings. I mean, I didn't really have a lot of conversations with them, but I had friends that were a little older. So like I was hearing stuff and, you know, I was around some people. So, but like no one ever directly was giving me advice or saying certain things or whatever. Uh, You know, I don't think uh, most people will never get that. Like to your point, I don't think. And yeah, you're basically saying, okay, you're going to have access, endless access. You could spend all day on your phone looking at porn 24 seven, but yeah. like, you know, we're just going to trust you to find that balance and figure it out. That's yeah, very hard to do. I, and she said it like thrives in secrecy because there is this shame element and it makes you unable to talk to other people about it. If anything, it drives you further away from being able to talk about it. You know what I mean? I never felt like I could talk. I still, to this day, I mean, I'm 31 years old. I'm not going to talk to my mom about something with sex, Yeah, you know, because I just feel like that's not the relationship that I have with her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and even my siblings. So I I think that it's, uh, you know, on the parents (laughs) and if you're an older sibling too, to make sure that you're, uh, you know, the younger people in your house kind of like, have some sort of idea before they're out there trying to figure it figure it out mm-hmm. on their own. Even like it's good open, to give it like creating the space and opening the floor of do you have any questions? You yeah. know, these are things I think about recently. I'm a long way off, but like I have a daughter now. Like I, d- I didn't have that conversation with my parents. What the hell is my approach going to be to this? You know? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, and I also, I, I, I forgot who, who said this, but I, I was talking with a woman one time and she told me when she was 16 years old, she went to her dad and asked her dad, uh, like, can you take me to go buy condoms? And I was like, that is so, ins- that's an insane thought to me, right? Yeah. At the time, right? But now it's like, I hope I have that mm-hmm, sort of relationship mm-hmm. with my future daughter because I don't want her to feel like I can't talk to him. Mm-hmm. Like my, her yeah. own father. That's like, terrifying. She should feel like she can talk to me and have open conversations because I want to be able to give advice. I don't want you to feel like that you can't talk to me and, you know, do whatever. Like I, like that I think is important. So to avoid things like porn addiction and to avoid like, you know, just, just viewing the world through the lens of porn and feeling like this is what sex is like. And mm-hmm. if it's not like this then it's not good or it's bad or, you know, whatever, like there needs to be some sort of like warning. Or whatever, you know, like everything else, there's a lot of different vices out there that people warn you about, like drinking and smoking and drugs and stuff. Right. But like you at least have this knowledge that you will probably come bad. across this thing. Right. And it should be handled delicately yes, or like, avoided or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And then you but, can move forward with like, I know this thing that I'm doing. There are things that could happen from it. Mm-hmm, and I'm aware mm-hmm. of those things. And, you know, whatever. At, at least there's that. Um, but with porn, it's like it's that and sex and stuff. If you grew up in a household like I did, like no one talks about it. No one really gives you any sort of warning that yeah. things could go wrong or this and that. It's just like, don't fucking get pregnant or like don't have sex at all. Yeah, yeah. And you're actually creating a further gap between you, like a, a, a communicative mm-hmm. gap between you and your child. Like, I think it's important to have those conversations so your child feels like they can come to you and talk to you about those things. And th- things like this can possibly be avoided. I'm not saying 100%, but it could possibly be avoided. 
And I think that's like important, but again, like I think it's a combination between those two things. The access is very difficult and, and this is happening to a lot of people. And I know there's people out there that probably think they, they have an, a porn addiction or they wish they watched porn a little bit less. This is happening to a lot of people. So I, I would suggest in the same way that she did talk to someone, talk to, you know, one of your friends. It doesn't have to be your parent if you feel uncomfortable, but somebody or a therapist about, you know, this and, and just, it just start talking. Talking helps so much. Yeah. And it's never soon, like too soon to talk about something. Right. You know, I think a lot of people think they need to hit rock bottom mm -hmm. to, to have that conversation, to finally come out and talk to someone about it. But even if you have that inkling, that this could go downhill or I might be on a slippery slope, that's a great time to talk. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sooner rather than later. But we appreciate her coming on and being so honest. Yeah, um, but honestly, best of luck to her. Like, yeah. I know she's got a journey ahead. You know, she's so conditioned. Having done this 13, is, it's, that's so young for that to start. Um, but, you know, for her to be open with her partner talk about it, come on this show. Like she's for sure on the right path. So yep. we, we really hope she gets where she wants to. For sure. Uh, for anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, hit us up. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us your story and we'll get back to you. Yeah, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Bunch of clips from the show. A bunch of discussions in the comments. Been going a little wild lately. That's at OPL Podcast. You could support the show at patreon.com slash OPL show. And that is all. See you guys next time.